Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Glorious Life on Wheels. A week or so ago, I did a video, and it was on the $20 an hour increase in wages for fast food workers in California. And I asked the question, do you think that this salary increase is going to destroy California? Some of the comments in the last video suggested that I don't want people to earn a decent wage so they can support themselves. And nothing, I mean nothing, could be further from the truth. I've worked at minimum wage jobs, so I know what it's like to try and take care of a household on a minimum wage job. But in this decision, there are some consequences that I believe are actually, and have actually, already harmed some of the very people who this decision and this increase was supposed to help. So come on, and I'm gonna share some of the things I think are very problematic about this decision. And I would really like it if you would let me know in the comments, do you think I'm right? Or do you think I'm way off base on this? The minimum wage in California has been increasing over the last several years. In 2019, it was $12 per hour, and as of January 1st, 2024, it was or is $16 an hour, except for fast food workers. It had increased a dollar each year, except for in 2023, it went up a dollar fifty to fifteen fifty an hour, I believe, and then it only went up fifty cents in January of 24 to $16 an hour. That is a way that businesses can absorb it over a gradual period of time. And to me, there's no need to lay off people and there's no justification for doing it when you're absorbing it over a period of time. But this latest raise went from $16 an hour to $20 an hour for fast food workers. And that is a 25% increase. Now I'm not here to defend corporations that are making billions of dollars. But I am here to express the facts. And that is that these companies are not going to just sit by and absorb this loss of income and increase in expenses without taking action. And the people that they take action against are often the very people who the increases are supposed to help. And if you don't believe me, listen to this. Pizza Hut franchises across California are laying off their delivery drivers and they're blaming the state's minimum wage increase for the move. The layoffs will affect more than 1,200 delivery drivers across the Golden State. Local franchises say they will rely instead on third-party delivery apps. Those Pizza Hut delivery drivers will soon be off the roads. This Pizza Hut driver in L.A. did not want to show his face, but tells us he's already been notified he'll be terminated after working with the company for 10 years. Two large Pizza Hut operators in California are laying off all their drivers ahead of a new state law that hikes the minimum wage for fast food workers to $20 an hour. The layoffs involve more than 1,200 in-house delivery drivers. The state's franchises say they'll now rely on third-party delivery apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats to deliver their food. Other fast food chains like Chipotle and McDonald's have already announced they plan to raise menu prices as a result of the wage increase. And Southern California Pizza Company has also announced they will be laying off about 850 delivery drivers for the same reason. Those news clips were from December 2023, before the increase even went into effect. Companies were already laying off employees. According to that news report, 1,200 delivery drivers lost their jobs from Pizza Hut including people who had been with the company for a decade and 850 from another company. That's over 2,000 people who lost their jobs before the $20 an hour wage increase went into effect. And that's not all. That's not the only people who are going to be impacted. 
who were supposed to be helped by this new increase. Local businesses say the pay increases can be challenging to keep up with. So it's kind of causing us to have to increase our menu prices as well as uh, find new ways to limit labor um, just to stay profitable. In addition, he thinks they will need to cut shifts. It's, it's definitely limiting our available out, uh, labor hours. As that restaurant manager said, they're going to be looking for ways to cut labor cost and cut labor hours. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what some of the people that I interviewed said. They said that their hours and their shifts had been cut back. They have let people go at some of the restaurants where I talked to individuals. Also, they're using more kiosk where you go up and you order yourself at a machine rather than having people take your order. At one restaurant that I passed by of fast food, it no longer is open the same hours in the lobby. It's only open in the evenings for drive through So what does that mean? The people that they needed to have working in the lobby, cleaning the lobby, taking the orders, they no longer need them. So they've cut those people out. Those people have lost jobs. Yes, some people are getting more money per hour, but many other people are getting their hours cut. So you get a raise and then your hours are cut, it's a net loss. Or you lose your job altogether because they don't need as many people because they're going automatic towards machines and eventually probably robots. So, you know, this to me is a band-aid on a much, much bigger problem. Before I address what I think the bigger problems are, let me just share this. After the $20 an hour increase went into effect for fast food workers, hotel workers in San Diego started picketing. And their position was, well, if fast food workers are getting $20 an hour, we should be getting $25 an hour. So it's not going to stop. And what will happen, I predict, because I've already seen it in other parts of the country, and in other places within California, what happens when they decide to cut cost at hotels? Well, what they do is they limit the number of days that they provide uh, room cleanups or where they come in and they, you know, give you fresh towels and vacuum your room and that type of thing. So I had to go out of town recently and I flew. So I didn't stay in my RV. I had to stay in a hotel. Well, at that hotel, they have a new policy since I was in that area last. They don't come to your room every day to clean it. What they do is they will clean your room three days a week, but, and this is the big but, you have to call and ask for it by a certain time. And if you don't call by that certain time, you don't get your room clean on one of those three days. So what do you think that means? Well, I'll tell you what it means. If they used to clean rooms f seven days a week automatically, and now they only clean rooms three days a week on request, they don't need all those housekeepers. So a lot of housekeepers have been laid off. And if it goes to $25 an hour for housekeepers in California, I predict every hotel will start doing that. But you know what else I predict will happen? They will start doing what the airlines are doing. You know how the airlines, when you sit up near the front, not in first class, but just closer to the front, you pay an extra $100. If you have an aisle seat, you pay an extra $100 or so. Well, I believe that hotels will start charging an extra fee to have your room cleaned of $50 or $100. It won't impact me because I hardly ever stay in hotels, but I'll tell you who it will impact. It will impact the workers. In my opinion, $20 an hour for fast food workers or even $25 an hour for hotel workers and housekeepers is not the solution. Based on different reports that I read, in one, it said that $47 an hour was the needed salary to have a livable wage in California. Another report said that $38 an hour was a livable wage. Whether it's 38 or 47, 
That's a far cry from $20 an hour. Furthermore, most of these employers that are employing people at fast food places, they're not giving these people full-time hours. They're not giving them 40 hours a week. They're typically paying them for less than 130 hours per month because they don't want to pay all the benefits that go along with full-time employment. So these individuals are still having to work and cobble a couple of jobs together. What is the solution? I believe the solution, instead of politicians, in my opinion, grandstanding and patting themselves on the back for giving a raise that's still not going to give people a livable wage. Instead, they should be solving the real and addressing the real issues. And those issues are affordable housing, the cost of gasoline in California, and the cost of food. As far as affordable housing, I saw a report recently that the city of Los Angeles reportedly paid $800, $800 million dollars for three complexes, uh, housing complexes that have been sitting vacant for, I believe it's a couple of years. And the report was sharing how they had overpaid for each of these complexes that they were supposed to be housing people in, and now they're sitting empty. That's ridiculous. Counties and cities in the state also own buildings. There are empty hotels, there are empty motels, there are empty buildings, county and city buildings. Why not take some of those and turn them into affordable housing? That's the problem. The lack of affordable housing, especially for our veterans, our seniors, our single parents, and these gas taxes that make California gasoline $5.29 on average this week where in other states it's as low as $3 or a little over $3 or maybe even $2.99 per gallon. These are the issues that need to be addressed. And these are the things that will change people's lives for the better. But that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments what your opinion is. Let me know if you think I got it right or if you think I'm way off base. Meanwhile, stay tuned I'm going to be having some videos coming up that are going to be sharing stories about people who are having a hard time financially and how they're coping. Also, I have some tours coming up. And last but not least, I do have that video that I promised that I'm going to share tips on how to deal with being a perfectionist and hopefully how to help you if you're a recovering perfectionist. All right. Love each and every one of you. May your journeys be filled with joy and blessings, and I'll see you next time.